Yesterday in our study of prayer, we left off in talking about some of the reasons why we should pray or the need for prayer. We talked about the fact that it is a command of God and how we should have a strong desire as children of God to speak with our Heavenly Father. We also discussed the fact that God is concerned with our wants and with our needs, that we should want to pray to find grace to help in time of need. And lastly, we talked about the fact that we need to pray because God is Almighty. Well, picking up the second part of our study today, we see that we should also want to pray because God is willing to grant us good things. Jesus said, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened unto you. For every one who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened, Matthew 7, verses 7 and 8. Well, two verses later he added, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him, Matthew 7, verse 11. But friends, we see that God does what is best for us even when his answer to our prayer is no. It is what is best for us. We see also a need for prayer because prayer is an expression of love and adoration. Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Matthew 6 and verse 9. Since prayer is an act of worship, it should be filled with praise and respect and homage to God. He gives us an opportunity to express our appreciation to God for all that He has done for us. But also, we should want to pray to God because it allows us to follow the example of Christ. Christ left us an example that we should follow in His steps, 1 Peter 2 and verse 21. You know, Jesus often prayed and spent much time in prayer. And in a later lesson, we're going to talk about the prayer life of Jesus. But if we are going to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, truly live a Christian, Christ-like existence, then we must pray. Also, we should want to pray because we are in need of forgiveness. Like Simon, there are times in our lives that we need to pray to God that we might be forgiven of the thoughts of our hearts. We may need to pray for God's mercy when we realize as children of God that we've sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We need to cry out to God in prayer, asking God to forgive us of those sins, to hold those things against us no more, and to give us strength in the future to avoid falling prey to those things once again. The way that we access that forgiveness as children of God is not by entering the waters of baptism again. It's not by confessing our sins to a man, but it's by praying to God. And when we pray to God, we repent of our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us. But also, we should want to pray to God because prayer accomplishes that which is good. James assures us in James 5 and verse 16 that the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Simply put, the passionate, heartfelt pleas of one who is faithful to God will produce positive results. Friends, we must not lose faith in the power of prayer. In this avenue that we have, of coming before the throne of God and making our petitions known unto Him. Friends, we do not need to pray because merely it is a time to pray or that it has become a routine to us or it makes us feel better or it satisfies our conscience. We pray because of a real need. We pray because we want to communicate with God. We want to draw closer to God. And what a wonderful privilege that is to be able to communicate with our Heavenly Father. Friends, we want to thank you for joining us for our program today. And we pray that God blesses you with a wonderful day.